I'd like to do is, um, at least for the first part of our Bible study, is gain some discussion time for, with you. Why do you think why do you think people drink? Let me ask you that. What would be the reason why people drink? Stress off. What? Make them feel good. They feel good. Oh, and also to forget about things that they want to forget. I even, I even go this far and throw my college experience in there. Not my experience, college experience. Are you sure? I follow them, <laughs> but I know he would say that they drink because they it would allow them to do things that they wouldn't normally do. So we're bringing them on their shelf. I mean, if we want to bring it down to our vernacular, it made them push against and go against their own consciousness, their own conscience. So a variety. And it also does to some people, it makes them very angry and upset but Tell you come home and feed their wife, and then their son. You know, it 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 does different to them. Makes them feel froggy and sleepy. You know, so it makes them react to different people in the way. So they a lot of people when they say drunk, they don't care what they do to other people. They, they really don't know what they're doing in their lives. So, so how about some of you others haven't heard? I mean, how do you, re what would you respond? There's no, no one's going to be wrong tonight. This, and we don't typically have our Bible study to open up in a forum like this. I'm trying to mix things up. I want to get a little excited. And I want us to know from the Word of God. We'll look a little bit more together tonight. 
But let me hear what you have to say. Everything's been great so far. Even if you said something. Just a great job. There's a lot of good things there. I'll, I'll, where you read there in Proverbs 31. So it it alters the judgment. That's what the Word of God says. So, you know, it, it alters our ability to be able to take the Word of God, to apply it to our heart, and in our minds exercise good judgment. Uh, you know, all of you that work in any type of environment, secular environment, Maybe your stories and folks who maybe were drinking, and as you said, Brother Justin, uh, college. Uh, even those young people probably raised in good places, and their parents gave them good values, or maybe even church values, and then they get away from that, and it allows them to be who they're not because it takes away their judgment. Um, you know, you, you hear stories of folks, you know, they're fighting, or they're arguing, or they're being sensual, or they're. Um, responding to authority, uh, maybe if they are taken by the police or whatever because, of, you know, whatever that is, they don't exercise good judgment. How do people, you know, they're, they're uh, driving vehicles, they hit, they injure uh, other vehicles, they injure their vehicles, they injure property, or they injure other people up to killing them, or maybe even themselves. You know what, they're not using good judgment. They step behind a wheel and, and their judgment is off. And so you're exactly right, Sister Rachel, according to the Word of God, it is off. Also, the second thing you said, when folks are looking for a loophole, whatever it is, um, you know, and particularly tonight talking about that of consuming alcohol, and, and, and what, what is the reason for that? You know, maybe, maybe some will say, well, I would do it in moderation because it calms me or uh, it relaxes me. Uh, I, I want to say that, as you said, Sister Rachel, it can often be a loophole because our peace and our security should really come in Jesus. Go ahead, Brother Justin. Uh, jumping to the New Testament again. <laughs> but uh, Ephesians 5, 18, uh, where the Bible says, and be not drunk with wine wherein ex is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And once again, here we have uh, direction that we are not drunk with wine. Uh, I think it's interesting, I was reading the sign notes of Dave, he was actually saying that this is a reference to the, if you want to say, immoral acts associated with the worship of Bacchus, and it was an act where uh, people gather in mass and get drunk and have immoral acts, and then we put it together. And also, where he states excess is a, the Greek word, the definition for that is entering into debauchery or immoral acts. And I'm, I'm going to look at that a little bit more. You're right. Oftentimes, um, drunkenness is associated with sensuality. And uh, you'll find that it's linked together. So very good. Based on that, uh, I would even say that pagan worship is even linked with that. When you look at their philosophy and father, even Aphrodite, uh, a bunch of those up. Uh, and the build God, I mean, you can go across your home, but there's always um, immorality and drunkenness in the pagan with the worship. I see you next to the king. Can I start? 
Oh, no, I'm sorry, I thought so. said it good there, you know, what is the measurement for a person, um, where do you draw the line. We're going to look at that. Someone else? Oh, Greg. The first measure of the girl was uh, Noah, and um, we, we don't know exactly why. It, it doesn't say why he started drinking, but you know, things were going real good up until then. He, he made it. Maybe he was feeling pretty good about himself, or you know, the blessings of the Lord upon him, and he was feeling real good, and playing this vineyard, and it's time to celebrate. I don't know, but once it says here that um, he playing vineyard, he drank the wine, he was drunk, and he was on perfect place. And then uh, Shem and Jacob came in backwards, and they could, they could cover with him, but somebody had to see him first to realize that. And so his drunkenness brings brought shame to Noah. He didn't know at the time, but once he once he uh, sobered up, he realized what was going on. Then, he's, then there, there was some attitudes going on after that. He he, he cursed. That's that's where the first curse comes from. And and I, I like the footnotes in in my Bible here it says. Um, uh, it says, uh, with drunkenness comes sin, shame, and a curse. All mm -hmm. those things came just off of this very first time somebody got drunk. Yes, sir. There's a lot of repercussions to drink. Amen. You're all over my, 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 my first point. You're all over it. No, that's good. That's good. Look at it. Not the door. Come on, Brian. Tell me a little bit about that. They made in God. So, so Lot is, has left Sodom and Gomorrah. They fell into the mountains. Yeah. Lot's wife's no longer there. Now go ahead. Yeah, they made them drunk so they could uh, have a baby. Yes, sir. They committed an act that was wrong before God and that Lot would have thought otherwise would have never done. But because drinking got involved yeah. and he became drunk, he did something that he would have never done had he been sold. Very good. These are good thoughts. We're all we're all over tonight. I'll, I'll share a few things on these. Someone else. Okay, I'll give you an opportunity to speak again when we're done. Well, Craig, I'm going to start where you were starting there tonight, um, where we we see in. Um, Genesis chapter number 9, uh, starting there, let me just start at verse number 20. And Noah began to be a husband man, or he was taking care of a vineyard, that's what he was doing, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and, it, and, and was drunken, 
and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both of their shoulders and they went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness and Noah awoke from uh, his wine and knew what his younger son had done uh, unto him and he said curse be Canaan a servant of servants shall be uh, uh, shall he be unto his brother and he said blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. Well, let's just stop there. Before we jump into this, let me say this this evening. So, you know, oftentimes folks will say, well, uh, alcohol is a disease, and doctors will label it as a disease. Sin is a disease as well. Uh, know that and doctors will not label sin as a disease, uh, but it is a disease, and it eats away at, at the, uh, the heart of humanity. Uh, I, I do believe this, uh, that uh, you can say, well, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, and uh, we need to keep it pure. That is true, um, but let's remember that we have to keep balance in every area. So if we're going to use that for alcohol, and we need to think about it, about our daily intake and our diet, how we actually, lots of things. So that's an overall view, and that's true. We need to do it in every way. So I'm not, I'm not really focusing, Brother Doug, on going in that direction because I think that I, th I think there's more depth to that uh, from the Word of God that we can talk about the consumption of alcohol. And, uh, and Brother Greg, as you said this this evening, there's several things. So Noah, why he is finding himself here, we know we talked uh, just uh, last week, a few chapters back, of the enemy coming in like a serpent, and he's deceptive, and as he comes in, he tricks and he deceives. So I believe that he's working here even on Noah. God has just used him in a miraculous way. He's just been consistent in preaching the gospel for 120 years. He built an ark for the saving of his family, uh, and the devil hates that. He wants to get in, and he wants to disrupt families. Hasn't alcoholism destroyed a lot of families? I have it my own family. It destroyed a lot of families. Causes a lot of heartache. Causes a lot of pain. And so the enemy, even way back then, was using this tool to drive a wedge into family. And so the Bible says that here was Noah, that he drank of the wine, and he didn't just drink in moderation. What is moderation? How much did he drink? I don't know how much he drank, but I know this. He was drunken. And uh, when it comes with drunkenness, now we've talked, Brother Justin, about that doing instincts, do, doing things that you're free to. In good judgment, Sister Rachel, as you said, he would have never done, but he has bad judgment because of the alcohol that he's consumed, and now he is drunken. Now, the Word of God says that he, un uh, he was uncovered within his tent. And so we can look at many, many, many things and uh, to, to talk about what happened there with Ham. Now, one thing, um, I, I want to be careful what, what I say in company. You know, some uh, have said various things from an act happening that Ham did, uh, uh, in, in a couple of different ways. I'm not going to go there in detail. Um, uh, some think that Ham then uh, had a relation with um, Noah's wife because he knew of the drunkenness. Um, I just want to be careful how I say that with children here. Uh, uh, but so, I, I think, you know, Ham, I think. But I don't think he's really that close. I'm with you, brother. That's why I'm not going down that trail. Because he's a fan and told his brother. And let's talk about that for a moment. Let's talk about that. So, you know, whatever folks want to say, I believe that it comes down to that it was unethical, it was morally wrong for a child to see his father's nakedness. It was wrong. Right. 
And so he sees that. But it's more than just seeing that. It was almost like there was rebellion. And a lot of commentators say, was this rebellion in the heart of Ham? And he was happy to see his father. And because of that, he saw his father's nakedness. And there's like a pride, a happiness, and joy in seeing his father as well. Have you ever noticed how the world is when you see someone that's drunk? Oh, 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 look at them! Oh, oh. There's almost this, this happiness to see them in that state. What, what's so happy to see someone in a state of making bad decisions, not being cognitively there, or even become sick, or hurt themselves, or hurt someone else, or say things that become fuel to a fire that should never have been started if there wasn't drunkenness to begin with? So here it is that him, he, uh, there's something that, that he's happy. And he first tells his brothers about, ah, oh, look at that, I saw that, <laughs> he's drunk, uh -huh. But his brothers didn't take that same approach. The Bible says that they put a blanket on their shoulders and they walked him backwards. And I don't like seeing dad in this way. Dad made a bad choice. We should not see dad like that. And so we find that Noah deliberately uncovers himself, drunkenness and nakedness often go hand in hand. There is definitely a breakdown of people physically, morally, and certainly spiritually when they become drunken. And, and so the, the truth is that is his, his, his drunkenness led him to open shame. Now, how does God want us to live? Is our life to be shameful? Is our life to be led in such a way that someone should take uh, happiness in seeing us in an act that is not pure or holy? Does it bring glory to God? And so the very first act of drunkenness we see in the Word of God has linked with it shame. Uh, it has link that we will later see is is that of nakedness? Particularly not necessarily here, but in other instances, sensuality because of the drunkenness and nakedness. Now you add sensuality into the picture. And, uh, you know, we see from Esther, we see from, as you said, Brother Eli, from Lot and his daughters, drunkenness leading into sensuality. And, uh, that can often be the effects of drinking and drunkenness. As we move on through the Word of God, um, we find that when we see that word wine, and I've said this before, so I'm not going to spend a great deal of time on this, but you'll find that there is that in Greek and Hebrew that speaks of fermented wine or that of grape juice type of wine. Uh, Yangin in the Hebrew is a fermented wine and it's used 135 times in the Bible. As it is used in the Bible, this fermented wine over Half of its content of being used in the Bible, it is condemned and it is forbidden. Uh, you'll find that, remember when Daniel refused um, uh, the king's wine? This is what he was refusing, this fermented stuff. Now, there was times at the drink offering, you'll find that this word is used, but it was never consumed. It was poured out before the altar, diluted and poured out. So you never find it in a, in, in a way of being used in a way that, that is being consumed. Uh, then you have the word... Trollish, I'm going to say. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce some of these words. It is fresh wine, it is new wine, it is 
not fermented. And the Word of God, it is never used in the sense of being condemned or in wickedness. So you see these being contrary. Uh, Shekhar, she, S-H-E-K-A-R, is also a strong drink that is used in the Hebrew, often uh, found hand in hand with uh, Yeah. And uh, then uh, there's also O-I-N-O-S, which is in the Greek, and it can be used as, uh, as fermented or grape juice. Now, understanding that in the Bible, wine was made from many, many things. It was made from grapes, apples, dates, pomegranate, herbs, and spices. And uh, the Jews and the Arabs would keep their juice from fermenting by creating what we have today known as our concentrate. You know, you go to the store, you know, you in that frozen section of the brown can canisters, and you dump them in, you put water in it, you know, all that's concentrated, and you mix it up. And so it's much like our, our juices in general, from orange juice to apple juice to grape juice to whatever, you know, it is that concentrate. And so we find that, that the Jews most often uh, used it as a concentrate. They would boil it down to became like molasses. At other times they would take and they would dilute the juice and they would put water in there and then they would boil that water down and they would make it even a better concentrate. Very interesting the way that, that they work. But we find that also in Jeremiah, that Jeremiah shares with us that they pour it from one vessel to another to keep it fresh. Now, I don't know all the instances behind that, but keeping all the ingredients and everything that's in there, uh, it, pouring it from one vessel to another would keep it that, it, that it would be fresh. But as I said, uh, of the 135 times that this strong drink is used in the Bible when speaking of wine, not speaking of the concentrate, it is used in condemnation. And it is forbidden. As many of you have already shared, uh, the Proverbs 4.17 talks about the savageness that uh, a lion brings out in a man. Uh, Proverbs 23, Solomon in all of his wisdom wrote, and he talks about the financial pressure that it puts men under. Has that changed through, through the years? Do you find that, you know, I hear stories of some folks in my family, I'm not proud of this, but in generations past, stories of, uh, of wives meeting their husband at the workplace because if not, they would spend the whole paycheck on, on alcohol. Uh, you know, we are to be wise financially as well. And so once again, Sister Rachel, as you said, uh, there in Proverbs 31, verse number 4 and 5, it, it dilutes, it shatters, it demands appropriate judgment. So even when it comes to finances, uh, Isaiah talks about that it, 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 it will stir and it will stimulate passions in the heart. There are passions that are good that God has placed there that are to be used within the realms of marriage. And so that, that, that alcohol stimulates passions. How many marriages have been broken because uh, of, 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 of passions that have been stimulated that are inappropriate outside the boundaries of marriage? So when we look at alcohol as a whole, we find that it does that. Hosea says that it, that, that it steals away the heart. Samuel talks about it stealing away a life, that it brings death. Uh, it brings self-deception. It brings a, a, a slowness to justice being given. It brings self-gratification. It brings stumbling to those who are weaker in faith. And so when we look at all these things, that it provokes anger, Poverty is the result of it. It perverts justice. It brings confusion in the perception of mankind. Uh, 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 all the things that are linked with it. The Word of God condemns. So tonight when, when, when folks when folks look at 
drinking, and a little wine from